one of the things that we're able to do is to use food as medicine to help heal and maintain the health of our blood vessels. That's something that's well established. All these things are sensitive to our diet. We can keep our blood vessels healthy. What are some of the things that do that? Well, eating plant-based foods, you know, the polyphenols that come in our colorful vegetables, eat the rainbow, guess what? That rainbow helps to heal the blood vessels and keep that lining nice and smooth so blood can flow as well as possible. Uh, Omega-3s, you know, we know that marine omega-3s, which you can actually get from, you know, oily fish, and even not so oily fish and even shellfish can actually um, help to preserve and maintain that slippery, smooth, normal uh, lining of the blood vessels. Okay, very, very important for our brain health, not just for heart health, right? Omega-3, good for heart health. Turns out omega-3, great for brain health. All right, flavanols, you know, the polyphenols, flavanols, guess what? There's been studies looking at flavanols coming from plant-based foods like cacao, Cacao is the plant source for the material that's used to make chocolate. Dark chocolate has more flavanols, and ultra-high flavanol chocolate has been studied, and it protects not only heart health, but lowers the risk of dementia by improving brain health at the circulation level as well. So food as medicine is a no-kidding thing. And by the way, the food that we eat also uh, is supportive of our gut health, uh, here at Zoe, you guys have spent so much energy helping to connect to gut health with other parts of our health. And so I want to make another one, which is our gut health and our brain health are connected through our heart health, right? Gut brain is now becoming uh, accepted as, you know, yeah, I always knew that. But now we're talking about the heart as a way station between the gut and the brain. So it's, it's really gut, interesting. So it's gut, heart, brain. Now, how does the gut actually um, work? Well, you know, good, healthy gut microbiome, you want to feed it fiber, you want to feed it prebiotics with polyphenols from your food, you want to have it the chlorogenic acid from your coffee, the catechins from your tea, all right? You want to keep it away from uh, all the harmful ultra-processed foods and preservatives and chemicals that, you know, are going to harm your gut microbiome, do more good for that neighborhood of your gut microbiome it pays us back. How does it pay us back? Well, it lowers inflammation, for one thing. And by the way, lowering inflammation isn't just good for lowering the risk of cancer and improving the symptoms of autoimmune disease. But remember I told you, inflammation in the brain actually pickles your brain as well. So when you have good, good gut health, that lowering of inflammation, the butyrate, the acetate, the propionate that you may have talked about on other podcasts, actually also helps to lower inflammation in your brain. Gut health, brain health. And you think that is related to uh, another part of what can lead to dementia, the, the sort of higher inflammation levels Absolutely. in your brain? Because most people with dementia have been found to have high levels of inflammatory markers like CRP, C-reactive protein, and other inflammatory markers, TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukins. You know, th this, this is the stuff of scientists not of science fictionists anymore. This is the stuff that we're actually able to me measure. And actually, some doctors are able to measure that um, as well. I don't know if in your Zoe system, you're actually able to capture all those inflammatory markers. Sure, surely some of them. We definitely measure some of them, um, right. but we, we haven't had this focus on dementia. So it's really interesting. You're saying this link. It's going it's it's really... to be connected 100%. And so better gut health, lower inflammation, better heart health, better brain health, gut, heart, brain. It's starting to be one integrated system. You've talked a lot about food within um, lifestyle that can affect dementia. Um, I feel like the other thing that I've heard people talk about is exercise. And I'm guessing that somehow this links in again through like these hearts, these blood vessels. Do, do we understand how, why, firstly, how important is it? So you're thinking about this, um, whether it's for your mother or for, yeah. for you or me, and then how okay. does it work? We, we know that exercise is helpful. But when we think about exercise, a lot of people get put off or saying, you know what, I, I can't afford a gym or I can't, I don't have time to go work out two or three times a week. And they just kind of put it off and they're like, well, that's for somebody else. Well, listen, exercise means staying in motion. All right. And our body is designed to stay in motion. It's one of the laws of physics, right? A body that stays in motion, is in motion, stays in motion. So it's one of the things that we actually need to do. 
working out, being deliberate about our exercise is is good. Cardio is great. If you want to actually, you know, go for spinning or you want to go jump rope or you want to actually go swimming or you want to go ballroom dancing, those are all things that actually are good cardio, all right? And what happens when you're actually getting a really good workout? Okay, for those of you who might be jogging or running or training for a marathon, um, you're actually getting your heart working to pump blood. We just talked about this. The heart pumping blood through that 400 miles into your brain is going to be better at delivering oxygen and nutrients to that engine, that that mastermind that's inside your skull. So exercise is good for the brain. But there's more to it than that. Exercise also uh, winds up triggering stem cells. You want to get stem cells to actually help repair your organs, and you want to get a jump on that. You want to actually get a little more juice out of your stem cells. You want to exercise. Wow. Exercising helps your bone marrow release these stem cells, regenerative cells, into your bloodstream. And guess where they go? They go wherever there's something that needs to be fixed. Stem cells are very smart. Your brain needs to be repaired. It's going to go to the brain. Your liver needs to be repaired. It's going to, get, uh, it's going to go to the liver. You want to get a little more juice out of the system that's already set up in order to fix you from the inside out. Exercise is really important. That's right. So we had an, another guest on the podcast talking about he believed the the reason why exercise works in a sense is the exercise directly might cause some damage in your body, but it triggers all of these healing mechanisms. And it sounds like you're now sharing that's, like a particular way in which we might be starting to understand how that's happening. That is exactly it. So let me demystify exercise for people, right? So if you, and let's think about it from a young person's perspective, you want to actually be in really good shape. You want to look really good in the mirror. Okay. Uh, you you want to have just the, like my son now, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the six pack, the cut pecs, the biceps, right? The definition, right? So think about it. You got to work at that. You're lifting, you're doing your cardio. Let me tell you what happens when you're exercising you are straining your muscles. And in order for your muscles to get bigger, they have to regenerate. So you're, you're straining them. They're breaking down a little bit. That's okay. That's what they're there for. You're breaking them down. And then it's triggering the repair system, which includes stem cells, to build more muscle. So when a young person wants to build bulk and get more muscular, they're breaking down their muscles so your their own body can build it back up, including using stem cells and better circulation, by the way, so you get better blood flow and more stem cells into your system. Now, look, what's good for the biceps is good for the brain. And so as we get older, you know, not everybody is going to be of the mindset of actually going to the gym and working out. But this is where even a moderate amount of exercise can help. Even going for a walk for 30 minutes after dinner actually can be really useful. And if you, as you're old, getting older, if you wind up actually having knee problems, hip problems, back problems where you're not quite as mobile, this is where actually getting physical therapy to uh, help you out you know, right? you know, ask your insurance company, ask your doctor to help you out to get a physical therapist. And maybe you have a neighbor or, you know, somebody who is a, who's already trained as a physical therapist to help you stay in motion. Get out of that chair. Even if you need a walker or a cane, stay in motion. It's going to help your body. You know, you, you use the word breaking itself down. You know, I like to, I like to be kinder and gentler to say that, you know, you're, you're, you're putting it through its paces and then afterwards it's going to build itself back up and repair itself because that's how we're hardwired. So much of this, Jonathan, we're talking about is the body's own hardwiring that actually does what it wants to do. We just need to allow our body to do what it's designed to do uh, and not impede it. It feels as though what you're describing is sort of the same that you might be saying to me or you about what you should be doing. Is there anything sort of different for someone who is wanting to try and avoid this happening from somebody who, you know, um, knows that this is starting to happen but wants to try and delay or even maybe it sounds like potentially sort of prevent the progression? Yeah. That's a, that's a deep question, uh, Jonathan, because, you know, all of us want to avoid dementia of all the things. I mean, you know, maybe cancer is number one, but dementia uh, would be the, the other thing that everybody would sort of dreads, yeah. fears, yeah. and is probably willing to do anything at least to consider how they can avoid it themselves. Let me recap some of the high points of what we've talked about, uh, you know, in this conversation, because these are all the things that can actually protect us. Let's talk about exercise. 
stay in act, physically active, even 30 minutes of walking a day uh, is useful. Get good sleep. You don't want those toxins to build up. All right, get good quality sleep. Very important, right? So what do you need to do to get good quality sleep besides you know, um, being comfortable? Don't eat too close to bedtime. Don't drink too much alcohol. Don't drink coffee at the very end of the evening. All these things interfere with um, good sleep. Good sleep is required for the glymphatic system to drain to drain the toxins out of your brain. That's what's needed to be done. All right, now what about having good blood flow? Well, look, something very simple. It's never too late to stop smoking if you're smoking. It's never too late to stop drinking heavily, which can affect your blood vessels and your circulation as well, as well as directly pickle your brain. Alcohol is a toxin for the brain. Okay, alcoholic dementia is a real thing. So cutting down or cutting out your drinking could be a very, very uh, important part of uh, lifestyle. And then we talked about the gut. Gut health pays off throughout our lives for so many things, against autoimmunity, against cancer, against cardiovascular disease. Look, it's never too late to start thinking about your gut to protect your brain for the reasons we talked about.